I was hesitant to do this show because of the big corporate media backlash I was sure to get for saying the name Captain Midnight. I knew it could be construed to make me look like an oppressor. Nowadays, the word captain is an oppressive word, and midnight can mean a variety of things. I'm sure there are companies out there right now that won't let you wear a Kansas City Chiefs hat at work, not because the word chiefs relates to Indians, but because the word chief is an oppressive, male-dominated word. Or those who feel threatened and offended by my Chief Wahoo hat, and because you did the 23andMe DNA test, and you found out you're 2% Native American, so now you identify as an American Indian, and I am oppressing you by wearing the same hat I've been wearing for the past two years on Casual Fridays. Now, my sport ball team's cartoon mascot bothers you? Or, when you're called into the boss's office, you're lucky if you only get reprimanded for promoting animal cruelty at work. Wait, what? Yep, the vegan at work complained about the shirt you were wearing. The worst day fishing is still better than the best day at work. It's just a slogan. But, all of you know, fishing is a hate crime towards innocent animals. If you're an owner in the NBA, you're no longer called an owner. You are now on the board of governors, even if you actually own the franchise. Which meant 30 owners had to go out and get brand new business cards. All because of some player, you know who, said, he doesn't own me. The player who graduated with high school with a 2.8 GPA took it upon himself to interpret the word owner as demeaning and oppressive. And the NBA bought that malarkey. Wow. Some groups with their fixation with what they call oppressive or hurtful words. So they twist the definition of those everyday words that we have been using for generations to fit their weird narrative. Like a word is oppressing you. So every time we hang out and I say, so let's go, am I oppressing you? I am telling you what to do. Basically giving you an order, right? Words. It's how you say them and how they are interpreted or misconstrued. To make it clear, the next words are only a suggestion. So let's go. He's a pretty big dude at six foot three, 200 pounds. You might think that's why they called him Captain Midnight, like a superhero. Nope, it was because he wore glasses. Born in San Diego, raised in Pasadena, he played for five big league teams over his career and has at least one card from each team. All wearing spectacles. Raymond Lee Walls, Jr., Nickname, Captain Midnight. Utility player, pinch hitter. MLB debut, 1952. Lee signed with the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1951 and had a great season in the minors and was called up to the majors to start 1952. And by 1956, he would be a fixture in the bigs and had a good showing in 1956. But not so much in 1957. And after eight games, was traded to the Cubs. And his only real big game that season was on July 2nd when he hit for the cycle. It had been three years since anybody hit for the cycle. Of course, three weeks later, Mickey Mantle stole Lee's thunder when the Mick hit for the cycle. But 1958 would be Lee Wall's best season. Great statistically and was picked to be an all-star reserve. And in that game at Baltimore Memorial Stadium, he pinched hit for Bob Skinner and finished a game playing left field. He was a Cincinnati Red in 1960, and he was a Philadelphia Philly in 1961 but 1962 would find Lee back in his old stomping grounds, Los Angeles, as a member of the L.A. Dodgers. At the end of the 1962 season, Lee played in a three-playoff game versus the San Francisco Giants. He started Game 1 at first base, and in Game 2, he hit a double, knocking in three runs, sparking a seven-run inning, and a Dodger victory, avoiding elimination. But in Game 3, when he came in to pinch it, it turned out different. Lee lined out to Willie Mays for the final out. He was on the 1963 squad that swept the Yankees in the World Series, but he didn't play. One more season with the Dodgers, then he was off to Japan to become a Hong-Kyu Brave for one season. After stepping away from baseball for a few years, Captain Midnight returned as coach for the Oakland A's from 1979 to 1982, then worked under Billy Martin for the Yankees in 1983. He was a minor league manager, most notably for the Nashville Sounds in 1985. Lee was a fun, gregarious guy, and he had a silver tongue, a real smooth talker, and he put that silver tongue to use during the off-season, when he would work as a greeter in Palm Springs. So it's the second week of the 1958 season. MLB now has two teams on the West Coast. Lee Walls is the Chicago Cubs right field regular, and the Cubs are in L.A. to play the newly relocated Dodgers. 
The game is held at LA Memorial Coliseum. It's where they hold the Olympics, just miles away from where Lee Walls grew up. The Dodgers played their games there until they leveled Chavez Ravine and built a controversial Dodger stadium. So how does a local boy from Pasadena welcome the Brooklyn Dodgers to their new temporary home? Captain Midnight goes superhero and hits three home runs and has eight RBIs as the Cubs stomp the Dodgers 15-2, making them wish they stayed in New York. But as you know, things got better for the Dodgers. Me, I'm hoping it gets better. I know it'll take a couple generations, just like it took a couple of generations to get where we are now. Personally, I thought the 1980s was a sweet spot and about as good as it was going to get. Back then, commit a crime, go to jail. In the 80s, you could tell a fat joke at work and not get fired. And the HR department was there to help you with paperwork. Not like now. People use HR like the lottery. It's where you go to file your claim and cash in because you feel I've created an unsafe workspace and you can't deal. Seems to me back in the 80s, people would acknowledge abnormal lifestyles, ignore it, and just move on. You were able to do that because people living those lifestyles weren't going out of their way to shove it down your throats like they do now, wanting inclusion and acceptance. It's hard to ignore this type of mentality because it's finding its way into all aspects of American society. And I have to deal with it because it's creeping into almost everything under the guise of inclusion and fairness, especially in sports and schools. I tolerate it because I watch TV, but boy, it sure is annoying. I sure do miss the 80s. 1984, San Francisco, good times. Me and my friend, who's a rock star, I think you can tell who's who. 